and welcome to the talk show, the first entertainment space created by and for professionals in the reading and caring of pigs. The only show that will leave you grinning like a pig in a slop. Welcome! Tonight's subject is animal welfare. Why animal welfare? Well, because if we don't treat the animals the way that they need to be treated, the animals will not perform. They will not be as we are expecting to be. They will not react to the vaccines, they will be eating less, they will have behavioral problems. So it's not about politics. It's about animal needs. And to help us giving some light into that subject, we have invited Deborah Temple, a leading expert in animal welfare. So fasten your belts and join us for this trip tonight. <laughs> Wow! Thank you, thank you very much. And now put your hoops together and oink it up for the sensational Alex Carvalho! Thank you, Ted. Good night and thank you for this uh, unmerited introduction. It's a real pleasure to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here, I think. Tell us, Alex, uh, do you think that we are indulging our peaks beyond our means? Absolutely not. I think, you know, it's never too much when it comes to our pig companions that we so much love. And precisely to help us explore the limits of this oinkfulness, we have our next guest. She's a veterinarian, animal behavior scientist, currently working in the University of Barcelona. I have pleasure to present <laughs> Deborah Tempo. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Alex. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Welcome to the show. Thank you very much Welcome, for inviting Deborah. me. It's a oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for here. coming. It's really a great pleasure to have you here. Mm -hmm. Deborah, are you ready for the biggest speed round? Well, let's see. I don't know. All right. Hope so. This is a kind of high speed interview, you know, where our guest, that means you, you need to answer as many questions as possible in just two minutes. Are you ready for that? Well, yes, I'm ready. Let's see. Sure, eh? I, I hope so, so, yeah. Okay, so let the countdown begin. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what you will have been if you were not a veterinarian? A firefighter. Do oh, you are a researcher of back in the WAP. Uh, what, what does it mean? Uh, well, I'm, uh, we are a group of friends, vets, researchers in animal behavior and welfare, and um, we go on with that, which is a lot That's already. Great. Do animals suffer? Yes. The assessment of welfare should be based on animal-based measures. Yes, but also if you want to detect problem, it should be based in animal-based measures. If you want to solve problem, it should be based in management measures and resource measures. How you can measure the level of stress in an animal? With a lot of indicators, you can choose physiological indicators and behavioral indicators. Okay, is total animal welfare economically viable? Not always. Uh, do a pig that is not stressed have a better quality of pig or pork meat? Yes. Does an animal raised in an extensive production system enjoy higher welfare status? Not always. Is the consumer ready for paying this extra cost of doing that? Willing for, but I'm not sure they are totally ready. Do we need more education on welfare, yes. on animal welfare? Yes, of course. Now take your time. <laughs> Does intradermal vaccination provide welfare <laughs> benefits compared to classical vaccination? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Why pigs do engage in a tail beating behavior? Uh, because they are bored and frustrated. Why? Because they cannot explore, they cannot forage, and pigs are very smart animals, so they get bored very easily. Okay, is the well-being of humans comparable to the ones of the animals? Well, one thing depends on the other. <laughs> time, time is over. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Thank you for playing this stressful thing. Yes, I, stressful. I think it's the first time that I did that and it's not an easy thing to do. It. No, no. Thank you, Deborah, for coming with us and please accept this small present that we want to give you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miguel. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for inviting me. Pleasure. Thank you, Deborah. As our audience can imagine, Deborah has a wealth of insights on the matter. If you're left craving more, you're in luck. You can delve into an in-depth interview in one of the show's extensions, the couching sessions. 
For those seeking a deeper understanding, animal welfare, it will be available on our website and social media channels, so be sure to check time to time and satisfy your curiosity. Thank you. Oh, what a great interview with Deborah. No? Do you like it so far? Yeah, I think it was amazing, yeah. And the format, I think that was a great format, though. No? Yeah, and I mean, she did an excellent job, you know, summarizing just in under two minutes a lot of information. So I, I think it was really excellent. That's true. But n now it's time for bridges. Can you help us on understanding again what's bridges? Sure. I mean, bridges is... In a summarized form, like Bridges is, is a specific initiative that we are having uh, where we look for initiatives at the local level, at the country level or regional level, and we bring those initiatives to the spotlight. We give some airtime to people so they can inspire other people in other countries and regions also to create something to support the, the industry. So let's do one thing. Let's cross these bridges. How does MSD Animal Health will be able to actively contribute to be part of a solution for these existing and future needs in the industry? Well, it's going to be... Uh, um we're, we're on a path, so it's not going to happen overnight, that's for sure. And so, so we, we, we have our first stone, you know, uh, in the path that we're on, and, and uh, um, it's, it's called LEO. And um, with LEO, uh, it's, we're basically on a starting point of um, tracking the animal all the way from birth to marketing. Um, but there's going to be many steps that are going to follow because LEO is really, it forms our base. Um, it helps us collect data on individual animals and um, when they're born and you can collect several parameters and then we will continue to collect data all the way to slaughter. And in the end that's, you know, we're listening to what the consumer wants. Uh, as I said before, the consumer is interested in understanding on where their meat comes from, what happened to that pork chop, you know, so that they now are buying and that they're, they're about to cook for their family. So that's, Leo is our starting point, basically. So, but I, I expect if you follow us in the future, then you will see that there is many more building blocks that will follow, you know, in, in the next few years here. What were the big changes that Idol has brought to Spain, to mm -hmm. the swine industry yeah. in particular? Mm -hmm. Yes, for us in Spain, Idol means improvement. Improvement for uh, bio, general biosecurity, for animal welfare, for both, for pigless, and uh, mainly for sows, because they receive many, many vaccines in these uh, cycles. Another important aspect is the safety of the products to reduce uh, significantly the, the effect, effect adverse. Hmm. Uh, and finally, the, the elimination of the rigs or needles in the, in the mill. So considering you know, what you just told me, mm -hmm. what are the benefits of now having the possibility for administering four vaccines mm -hmm. in one mm -hmm. administration? Well, Alex. Now we, we can improve the, the quality of vaccination of pigs uh, by reducing the, the handling and uh, obtaining a better immunization of the, of the animals. And obviously the flexibility to adapt the, the vaccination program to the needs of each uh, farm. So now if we put it all together, so the changes that Idol mm -hmm. has brought to the field plus the new possibilities to mm -hmm. vaccinate more efficiently, as you said. What would be the three top mm. benefits that you would highlight? Okay, Alex. <laughs> Let me say four, four benefits. Four right. benefits. First, efficacy, obviously. And animal welfare, safety, and the, the biosecurity. Why? Because we don't need to use needles. Hi, Magdalena. Hi, Alex. What is MSD doing? to support our customers, what they're actually doing to support them with, uh, towards the antibiotic framework that is going to be implemented in the future. Yes, our company is, uh, of course, supporting our customers. We are preparing fantastic campaign. Uh, Excellent. Mostly, uh, it's a training for our veterinarians, for uh, breeders, 
uh, taking care uh, of our farms. Uh, it's awareness uh, about uh, uh, health, about uh, potential using antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep your fingers crossed because we are at the beginning of this adventure, but for sure it will be fantastic fantastic training and fantastic sharing knowledge about law and about using uh, antimicrobiological uh, um, medicine. I'm Hong, the Regional Marketing Director for MSD in Asia. And today with me, I have Leonardo, who is our Marketing Technical Manager in the Philippines. So Leo, I know you guys have been struggling with ASF for a long time in the Philippines. Uh, and uh, you, many Pig farmers are wanting to restart their farms after African swine fever infection. So can you give some quick tips on this? Yeah, sure thing, Hong. Actually, I just came from a farm here in the southern part of the Philippines this morning to give them assistance on how to restart properly. And the goal is to uh, uh, restart production as soon as possible with the high prices of pork being around right now. It will be a great business opportunity for them. And we are giving assistance and guidance to them and here are three quick tips that can be of help. First is making sure to identify and fix biosecurity holes before uh, doing anything. The second is there should be a regular stop training on the implementation of biosecurity and cooperation is very important on this thing. And the third is staff should be well aware of the protocol of uh, disease management, like fast detection of ill pigs, the depopulation procedures in order not to spread it uh, widely in the farm. For me, these three would be necessary thing and be on the top of the mind of every farmer before uh, doing restarting. Wow, what a great initiative, Alex. Thank you for the bottom of my heart. I think that was great. Thank you for bringing that to us. Thank you for your kind words, Mikael. And just to wrap it up, I really would like to thank all the people that participate and their courage, which is always difficult to come forward like that, and uh, ask to keep it coming, because I think it's a really good initiative for all of us. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, time is nearly up. But before saying goodbye, we simply cannot resist checking with our extraordinary Rika Julie, our global head of the Swine Business Unit. Hello, Rika. Greetings from this humble planet that we call Earth. Hey, Mikael. I hope your comment doesn't mean that I'm in La La Land. <laughs> no, of course not. Not at all, Rika. You are our eyes in the sky. Well, Mikael, not quite. Do you remember, I have a, a group of collaborators around the world. Um, you remember Roger, our beloved reporter? Of course, Roger. How could we ever forget Roger? Do you know that there is already a, a fan club of Roger? Well, that's great to hear, Mikael. Uh, they're going to be in for a treat here. Roger found some juicy details for this thrilling segment. Let's roll. Boy King all over the world. Good to see you. Hi, caramba, Rica. We're in Mexico, the hottest country in the whole wide world. I snuck a jalapeno on my path here, and let me tell you, my tail's got an extra swivel now. And here's the kicker. A bunch of pig industry big shots have huddled up here at Puerto Vallarta to chat about the business's future. So I'm going to try to grab their attention before they grab a margarita. Hey, you better get running, Roger. Go for it. Here I go. Squeeze me, squeeze me. I got a question, please. Did you know over in Japan, they're treating beef cattle to tunes and massages? Do you think that playing us some rancheras and treating us to a splash of tequila will result in tastier tacos? Oh, Roger, it could be possible, but I really don't think so. Pig industry is booming all over Latin America. Do you reckon Latin pork will sweep the world as much as Latin pop? Will we get our own Latin pork Grammys? Yes, Roger, I think definitely it's going to be like that because we are doing, you know, Latin awards, Latin Grammys, Latin pork recognition is very important. So I think we are going to have that. And you can count on me and you have my support. It's well known that we are the tastiest guys in town, right? 
So if we dress up in jalapeno sauce, do you think we will become the hottest sensation too? <laughs> uh oh. Okay, Roger, let me answer the question. First, the pork taste is the better in the world. It's soft, it's tasty, and you know, you can find a girl if you invite her to eat pork meat, so go for that. Wild boars spread diseases and devour everything in sight. We need to put a stop to these savages. Any bright ideas on how to keep them far away from our farms? Hey, Roger, yes, yes, we need to stop them. We need to stop with the savage animals. We need to hunt, we need to use traps, the health of our swine production, so this is our mission. Stop, stop wild, wild boars! boars. Stop, stop, ASF. stop ASF! Stop African swine fever? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> stop wild boars! Stop ASF! With raw material prices skyrocketing, do you think we'll end up sharing the dining room with our humans? Hey, fair warning, we eat faster than you. Roger, as long as you shower before, you're always welcome to my table. But you're right, feed prices are going up, so I think the best solution is to put you guys on diet, making you eat less, and yet making you grow fast and healthy and all pinky and delicious. Ay, 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 ay. Sai no yores. Phew, being reporters, no walk in the mud, let me tell ya. But we're not done yet, folks, cause there's plenty more squeals to come. Hmm, margarita time. <laughs> what a swine-tastic character, Rika. Yeah, I know, but I do have a little concern that the success might go to his head. Oh, really? How so? Ever since his last trip, he's been insisting on traveling business class. Business class? I fly economy. Hey, don't complain, Mikhail. Roger was traveling as checked luggage. Uh, uh, talk about prioritizing animal welfare. Thank you so much, Rick and Roger. We will see you soon. <laughs> wow, what a show tonight. I told you, animal welfare, not an easy topic to cover. Well, that was so great. Deborah Temple was giving so nice insights about that. And next time, next show, more to come, we will be with our friend. Ah, by the way, Roger, how we treat you in the show, Roger? Well, can't complain. I'm traveling business. <laughs> business? I need to talk with Rick, that's not fair. See you in the next show if I'm still here.